Hey everyone. In today's video, I want to talk about something called precipitated withdrawal, what it is and how to avoid it as nurses. So when we're talking about precipitated withdrawal, we're talking about a patient who is dealing with a substance abuse disorder and are addicted to or have been using opioids. When these patients come into the hospital, typically our role as the nurses is going to be to assess them using something called a COWS assessment. Precipitated withdrawal is a rapid and intense onset of withdrawal symptoms that start because they are initiated by a medication. And the medication that we most often see this with is buprenorphine also known as Suboxone. This happens because buprenorphine has a higher binding strength at the opioid receptor. So if you think about someone who has used opioids and they're still in their system, they're still in their brain, they're still on those receptors, you have the re receptors in your brain, and then you have all those opioids that are attached on. And then, do you like my little hand motions? And then buprenorphine comes in, right? And you have all of those on there and it kind of wiggles between, it pops all the opioids off because it has a stronger affinity for the opioid receptor. Now, when all those opioids pop off, what happens? The patient goes, you start to see rapid and intense withdrawal symptoms because all those opioids are, are coming off the receptors. This also occurs because buprenorphine has a high affinity but a low intrinsic factor. And what this means is when it pops off, all of those opioids and then connects to the receptor, it activates the receptor to a lesser extent than the other opioid that the patient was abusing. So what this means is although you're popping off some opioids and buprenorphine is coming in and attaching to the receptor and there is still something attached to the receptor, it's not activating that receptor as much as the drug of choice was because it is only a partial agonist where things that people abuse are full agonists. So really those will stimulate the receptor much more. So the other thing to note is that there is a big misconception that the naloxone within Suboxone is creating the withdrawal. And this is not true. Naloxone will only create a withdrawal effect when it is injected. So when it's taken sublingually, like Suboxone is, if you haven't seen Suboxone, it comes in a strip. Um, it's small, it's about this big, and the patient puts it um, in their mouth that's taken sublingually and it dissolves. So what can we do as nurses to prevent precipitated withdrawal? So one of the first things is patient education. And this is important because we need to explain to the patient why we're doing what we're doing. A patient may feel like, why are you withholding my meds? Why are you not giving me my meds? And this is only for the first dose of Suboxone. So that's the first thing. This is, if a patient is on Suboxone uh, maintenance and management, then we can, we can give it to them. There's no problem with that. But if the patient has been abusing opioids uh, outside of the hospital, comes in and the provider wants to use Suboxone as um, a way to help with their detox and possibly use in the future, then we as the nurse need to educate the patient on why we're going to wait for that first dose of Suboxone and here is why. Because again, we just talked about those receptors and if the opioids are on the receptor, so if you see the patient and they're comfortable, they're not detoxing, they have no pain, everything is fine with them, it's because those opioids are still attached to the receptor. They're not feeling any withdrawal because the opioids are on there. Once they start coming off, we're gonna see those signs of withdrawal. So that could be anxiety, that could be um, sweating, agitation, it can be upset stomach, headaches. So on the cow's assessment, they will have all of these different types of questions that you will ask. So when we're looking to see if a patient is detoxing, the signs that we're gonna see is an increased heart rate, sweating, restlessness, bone and joint aches, runny nose, GI upset, tremors, yawning, anxiety and irritability, pupil size, and it's called goose flesh skin. And that's kind of like goosebumps, I actually have them right now because I'm cold. So 
that's what we're gonna be looking for. And so when it comes to the first dose of Suboxone, we want to see that that's happening with the patient because if not, when we give that Suboxone, it's gonna come in there and pop all the opioids off the receptor and that patient, I mean, when I've seen this in the clinical setting, it is very quick, it's very rapid, and it's very uncomfortable for them. So we do not want to do that as nurses. So when we're going to give the first dose of Suboxone, we want to make sure that that patient is scoring a five or a six on the COWS assessment. However, scores greater than 10 are preferable. But again, we are working with our patient in treatment. So this is a spectrum. If that person is having high anxiety, irritability, they want that med and they're only scoring a six. There is a lot of thing with the cow's assessment is I might score your anxiety of a two, but another nurse might score a four. There's there's a different spectrum. So, you know, we use our nursing judgment to decide when this best moment is to initiate the Suboxone. So another thing we can do is we can also talk to the patient and assess the type of opioids they've been taking. So there are short acting opioids and there are long acting opioids. So it's just important to know that if a patient is on a short acting opioid, which is something like heroin or a crushed oxycodone Percocet Vicodin, then prior to induction of the Suboxone, we wanna make sure that the patient has waited at least 12 to 24 hours. So that's just kind of um, a good nursing knowledge note to know. A long acting opioid is going to be something like oxycodone taken orally in pill form, not crushed. If, they're on, if they were on a long acting opioid, then they'll probably be waiting around 24 hours before we start the Suboxone. And if patients are on methadone, the provider is typically going to taper them off before starting the Suboxone. And typically this taper lasts for one week. The last dose should be no less than 36 hours before starting the Suboxone. And it's important to note that patients going from methadone to Suboxone may feel some discomfort for several days and even up to two weeks. So the goal of having a successful induction of Suboxone for our patients is to make detox as comfortable as possible and by not providing this it may kind of push our patients to want to use opioids to help relieve those withdrawal symptoms. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video talking about precipitated withdrawal and the use of Suboxone in psychiatric nursing patients. So if you enjoyed this discussion make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below to the channel and i look forward to creating more nursing content for you guys and having some important nursing discussions all right i'll see you guys next time bye